Hello, everybody. The idea is uh, basically to, to introduce you some uh, reflections that we have made I, um, in the uh, group. I lead, uh, and among other, th of other responsibilities related to standardization and the NFEIG, et cetera, is related as well. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. The weather here has not, it's not helpful precisely. Um, is uh, related to uh, the, the evaluation of uh, new technology trends and the, uh, um, the evaluation of the applicability of certain research results. So it's very much related with the experimentation, but take into account that, well, when we're talking about doing serious engineering, <coughs> serious engineering has to be based on serious science. Serious engineering is the, applicabil the application of, a, of, a, of a serious science principles to achieve goals. And it's essential to be able to experiment and to, and to have <coughs> um, results for those experiments that can assess how to evolve in the future. Um, the, any, anyone knows about what is this? No? Have you heard about cold fusion? This is the diagram of the cold fusion system, which is basically is something that is extremely appealing, and it was a claim that I, for those of you, I guess that most of you are old enough to remember the cold fusion uh, uh, fuss, and it's something that is, was extremely appealing because it was a, a, a promise of uh, infinite energy for, for mankind and in a, without, uh, almost without risks, and well, you could take a battery and put the battery wherever you want it uh, and provide full cold fusion energy to whatever. The problem is that it was reported once and it has not been reproduced since then. And this is something that makes you uh, think about this uh, site from, from uh, Karl Popper. It's about that something that you cannot repeat, that you cannot reproduce, doesn't make any sense in terms of science. In other terms, whatever. We all, uh, I guess that we all have uh, irrepetible experiences in the past, but if you want to do science, you want to do serious engineering, you have to guarantee that what you do and the results you obtain are repeatable. And repeatable by others, that is equally important because it's the proof that what you're doing is serious. Well, in many cases, and this is something, for example, one of my, of my girls is uh, recently graduated in medicine, and I have discussed with her very often that I don't think medicine is a, is a science. And it's not a science for very good reasons. I mean, it's basically for ethical science. You cannot repeat things with humans. You cannot say, hey, whatever, whenever I take the, the, the liver out of a body, uh, that uh, person dies. You, can, you, can, you are not allowed to do so, and this is very good that you are not allowed to do so, but it makes that there are very good reasons for not being able to repeat things. Not, not, it's not that everybody is, uh, is doing bad because of this. Oh, well, for, because ethical reasons of the, of, of the nature of the uh, research field, it's very, it's very complicated to make repeatable experiments, I don't know, with galaxy uh, collisions or things like that. It's really... <laughs> In the moment we can do it, well, probably we wouldn't need even science at all. We will be so, sort of uh, almighty. And this is something that is happening very often with computing and network results, recently, mo mostly recently. There are good reasons as well. There, there, there are uh, the extreme complexity is what we're dealing with, and that conditions are extremely disparate, and has been extremely disparate. Different operating systems, different hardware, different kind of connections, etc. What makes that many things that are reported in papers and that are reported in, in technical, um, in technical um, um, uh, brochures and all the like is difficult to reproduce and you have to make, in many cases, leaps of faith to, uh, uh, to apply something. This is another, another uh, case of a discussion on reproducibility because it was, a, uh, it was a, a vacuum pump that was created by someone in, in England and when people tried to reproduce it, they got results that the original manufacturers uh, did not false because they, they did not have understood how to build the, uh, the vacuum pump. Well, taking into account the quality of the, uh, of the blueprint, so it's a little bit <laughs> understandable, that is difficult. So the goal is uh, the possibility of, uh, of uh, having, having a corroboration of the results, 
And this note that in, in, in all cases, um, I'm not talking about that all results are, I mean, or all the uh, difficulties are, are intentional. They can be perfectly unintentional because many good reasons. So it's, a, it's corroboration, so the results that we're obtaining are repeatable. You can continuously get the same results when you do the same thing. That they are transparent, so you can avoid, for whatever the reason, that you're biased in one direction or the other. And that includes both sides. It's about uh, the environment in which you make the proof, the, the, uh, the experiments, and, and the environment in which you're running everything, and the mechanisms you're using for measuring. So you, you have the methods can be reply, uh, replicated. And <coughs> robustness is that, uh, you know, in the, uh, is that you can get a, a, a statistical significant distribution of results, and you are not just picking up uh, recently, I, I review a paper, it was quite curious because it was saying, no, we have failed this in 100, um, well, we, we run this on 150 times, 100 of them we fail, we have get the results of the 50 times we, we, we were successful. Which is something, I mean, it was, it was extremely uh, candid, I mean, something that I, 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 did, I, I did really appreciate, but on the other hand, in terms of scientific uh, report, it was uh, quite curious to, to, to read. And well, if you look at this, uh, this graphic comes from a, from a study on repeatability in general in ICT that was made by the University of, of Arizona. And you look that the only ones from uh, 600 uh, uh, papers that they analyzed, only around uh, 200, one third, were really repeatable because of different uh, conditions. Uh, as I said before, the, 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 uh, the environments are very complex. You are not. Uh, describing them completely, that there are many incomplete uh, uh, reports of, no, we use a, a service running Linux, uh, Debian Linux, and things like that. It's not enough to repeat the results. The measurements are too focused on a particular, on the particular aspect that you want to, to highlight. And well, the variations are limited because it's complicated to, to make changes that are, that are sound and at the same time keeping the stability of the, of the environment. And let me say this, this is not only about papers, it's not only about whether the science is, uh, is um, progressing or, or, is, or we are right now in a, in a moment, like uh, I read some time ago, that we are, we are uh, approaching again the good old times of the uh, medieval ages in which uh, the, the authority of people like Aristotle was something that it was established, only that we're changing for Aristotle for, for, by uh, a few uh, just exascale uh, uh, corporations. It's about that whenever you want to, to make a technology evaluation, I mean, you're an operator and you want to run and to evaluate how NFV will, will behave or what, how a certain SDN approach will behave or whether to use white boxes or use anything else. Whenever you need that, you need this repeatability. You need this repeatability because it would help you in, in making the decision. This is is associated with strategic planning and with something that is more and more, I'm, I'm talking, for example, about slicing and 5G, et cetera, is going to happen that these are multi-domain environments. If I make an agreement with whatever, a customer, an, another fellow operator that I want to connect, I don't know, a regulator, whoever, and we need to establish a common understanding of how we meet, uh, how we uh, uh, measure, uh, which are the conclusions of our analysis, it's important that they, they are repeatable. And this, we have to do this, all this, while we are asked to shorten the cycles, to reduce the time that it takes uh, for verification, uh, certification, sorry, to reduce the time to market. It's, it's, so th we have the pressure of being, on the one hand, do serious science, serious engineering, on the other hand, to make it faster. And well, here is where we have NFV and SDN to, to help, uh, because first is a provider, if we have a more regular infrastructure, it's way easier to control the environmental parameters, because we have mechanisms to describe them clearly, and, the, uh, and to have much more homogeneous measurement points. Uh, it's much easier as well to define when you, are you know that you are running a Linux kernel, you have points to measure much easily that when, you, when we're talking about any dedicated hardware. So then it's important is that this supports model-based approaches. You can make general descriptions of what you want to achieve that can be shared 
it can allow you and, and it can allow you as well to do something that is important, is just making it scalable. You can change from one environment to the other being consistent because you're using the same model. And you can be reasonably sure that you are applying consistently the same uh, uh, experiment descriptions. That happens both for describing the environments and describing the, the, uh, the experiments themselves. So we have models all over the place. And for sure, we're talking about this is, uh, this is software-based. Perfect. You have a virtualization. You can distribute the machine, the, the, the virtual machines, or the virtual containers, or whatever you're using, because it's a piece of software that will run, be running on an homogeneous infrastructure. And we have open source if we want to analyze in detail about the, uh, uh, the implications of a particular algorithm and method. Just as, a, as an example is what we are doing in, uh, with OSM, I, you should have, I, I guess you all have heard about OSM, right? Yes. So I'm not going to explain what it is or whatever, but this is something that uh, we illustrate this as a way of achieving or being close to DevOps for an uh, experimental environment that you can run on your laptop to have a first feeling of what, uh, uh, how things will behave into the possibility of running into a, into a limited test environment, into moving it into the uh, general, <clears throat> uh, the general uh, network setup of the, for, for operations, but precisely this can be applicable directly, and this is something that, uh, well, the rest of the presentation is about we, how we are applying this, uh, uh, this flow, precisely to provide support to independent experimenters that are willing to do things with our, with our 5G uh, um, test labs. And the idea is, well, you, you can start on your, at home playing with your, your laptop. You can move it to a, to a reduced environment to see how uh, the, uh, the, ex the experiment definition you have made uh, will deploy, and then you run the experiments in the, in the widest possible environment. We run this in a, in a place that is called Phytonic. Phytonic is, uh, well, I, I tried to call it 5G tonic, but somebody told me that it was a little bit too much. Uh, so it uh, it's, uh, starts for 5G Telephonic Open Network Information, uh, Innovation Center. The idea is that it's a place in which we bring together uh, companies that are somehow part of our ecosystems, uh, universities and research centers that are interested in collaborating with us, and the idea is that we, we have a uh, a physical place, uh, several connections and all the like, and uh, what we do is running experiments there to e e explore the idea around new, uh, the new uh, 5G networks and in general the new architecture for networks. So far we have 10 members, 5 collaborators and, and another 5 or 6 uh, verticals that are participating and the idea is precisely to have an open space when, when, where we can run uh, experiments. The point is that to run those experiments, what we facilitate is precisely an NFV and SDN enabled environment in which everything is based according to software network principles and they are structured in a way in which, well, we are careful as well with the uh, IPRs and all the like, so this is why there is all these domains. They are, well, they are slices, they are, they are physical slices because in some cases even the, uh, the access to the rooms is, uh, is limited precisely to preserve that nobody can uh, somehow snoop on or anything. But everything, with the exception of the, uh, for sure, the, the uh, radiating elements in antennas, uh, the, uh, um, the uh, things, I don't know which is the name, the things uh, uh, put, putting uh, light into the fibers and all the like are software-based and can be controlled. We have, and we have a different kind of, uh, of, uh, of hardware precisely to be flexible to attend the different experiments that come. And uh, with this, we have been running experiments since uh, for, for the last uh, three years, but we have uh, become part as well of a wider um, environment in which we are connecting several sites and uh, with a common orchestration, with a common orchestration based on NFE and SDN that is hosted in Fetonic and that includes, uh, originally it includes a few uh, sites uh, across Europe and Brazil, now we have grown up to this. More or less, each place is, uh, is particip each participating site is focused on a particular vertical, like eHealth or automotive, etc. But as you see, everything is centralized with an OSM orchestrator. That and well, there is a portal that takes the uh, experiment definitions that are translated into into uh, OSM NSDs, 
and those are deployed and located in the different, uh, <coughs> in the different uh, participating infrastructures. The important thing is that those uh, portal, uh, sorry, experiment definitions are repeatable. And as long as you are using, and this is, well, probably this is a limitation, but OSM, come on, OSM is open source. As long as you are using open source uh, OSM orchestration that you can replicate with not so much cost, you can uh, replicate the experiment as well. Apart from that, well, for sure, th there are challenges and there are things that we have to be, well, we are, we are making this evolve. This is part of a, of a, of a European a, a project uh, funded by European Union that is called 5G in Fire. And now 5 turning has become part of the, of the two of the main um, European funded um, um, fa test facilities for 5G, which are two projects. One is called 5G Vini, the other one is called 5G E. And we are, we are keeping this evolving. Uh, first, is about security. Security, we are trying to take things with security very, very seriously because if you want a common infrastructure, you have to be sure that you are sharing it in, in fair terms. Which is important is what we are, we are learning a lot about slicing, how to guarantee uh, uh, isolation in slices. That's a, a good uh, side effect. How you deal with uh, incorporating new sites, which are the rules? And we are, we are improving in identifying those rules. And how you, uh, well, is a multi-site uh, environment. Troubleshooting becomes, well, can be, can be tricky. The idea is that uh, <clears throat> we, uh, the, the model-based uh, approach for experimenting, testing, validating, whatever is something that it, it is helping us in, in making it evolve, in consolidating it, in going beyond the current network service descriptors, etc., because they are limited to something that has to be run. In some cases, you have to add, uh, you have to add additional things. Uh, and well, what is curious, well, not curious, what is natural being in, a, in the network is that the connectivity matters a lot. Uh, one of the challenges we have is, uh, as usual, with SDN in the one is something that is not solved at all. I mean, we're not talking about SD1, that is more a marketing term than anything else. We're talking about the possibility that you can, uh, a wider network that uh, is not yours precisely, can be uh, tweaked with just to connect two points and stitch dynamically according to the model that you are assuming to the, uh, to the internal things. And there are other um, issues about how the experimenters can access the functions and how SDN and NFV can interwork at several, at several uh, layers. Because the people that are, we are running SDN to provide the infrastructure, but people are coming asking us to run SDN, to control the infrastructure, to run their experiment. Uh, well, mm, the, uh, the, you, the, I guess you remember the, the good old days of the flow visors and the network hypervisors, etc. So we are trying to reinvent the whole thing because it's a quite complex environment. Apart from that, we, are, we, are, we have started another, another initiative, which is, uh, we call the mouse world. The mouse world is about uh, generating data. It's about generating data with the, with the goal of validating AI mechanisms and machine learning algorithms and their applicability, etc. Why? Because in, in most cases, whenever somebody comes with an AI system, tells you, no, no, you connect it to the network. Come on, it's my network. I live on it. Uh, it's something that I, I would like to validate it. Yeah, but you, we need real data. So we're trying to generate those real data and take advantage of those real data as well to evaluate whether certain machine learning algorithms are, well apply, are, are good to be applied in the, uh, on the network or whether they are only apply, applicable in the case of image recognition or whatever. So we, because we, we have the feeling that machine learning is something that still has to be adapted to the network environment. And, and just to, to, to finish, let me insist in that uh, we should avoid to fall again in the cold fusion days. We have to avoid that. We have to avoid networking cold fusion. We need to make serious stuff. And to make serious stuff, well, we have something that is extremely powerful that are the uh, software networks. And with this, I'm finished. Thank you.